Now I've got an interesting history on today's pattern. Imagine, it's 1945 in a department store called Meyer and Frank in Portland, Oregon. Now this is a store where Polly Roseboro used to tie in the sporting goods department there, but when he left, a young lady from Idaho named Audrey Joy came in and filled his position. And one day, she was tying up an order for a guy named Leo Falk when another guy named Del LaFollette came in, as he often did on his lunch break to watch her tie flies. And he was inspired by this one pattern that she was tying that day that he went home to his bench that night and came up with another pattern that was similar enough to the one that she was tying, but you know, different enough to really be a different fly. But he did name it the Falk, kind of in tribute to the, the gentleman that Audrey was tying the flies for. Now the fly does really well for La Follette and it becomes a family favorite. In fact, he actually wrote an article about it in a 1962 edition of The Creel, which was the journal for the Fly Fishers Club of Oregon. And that may be where Randall Scott Stetzer learned of the pattern because he included it in his book, Flies the Best 1000. In fact, I read that this was actually the first fly he picked for that book. So about this pattern called The Falk. It will remind you a little bit of an elk hair caddis with the palmer tackle and the deer hair wing, but it's typically bigger than most of the elk hair caddis we tie. So it's really thought to imitate one of the big western stoneflies or maybe even a grasshopper. But it's a really fun pattern, not at all hard to tie. I think y'all are gonna like it. Let's give it a shot. So there it is, the falk. I think this is a pretty cool looking little fly. I'm kind of digging this color scheme. It is reminiscent of an elk hair caddis, but you know, it's not. Tied on a, a bigger hook. This is a common sizes are eight to 14. I'm gonna go on a 10 and it's a two extra long. This is a terrestrial hook. So it's got that little bit of bend in it. Not a huge bend, but it's pronounced. Let's go ahead and put a base uh, black thread well around the start of the bend here. And the first thing we're gonna catch in, one of my favorite tailing materials, golden pheasant tippets. What I like to do, grab them by the tips and then just reach in here with your scissors, take about eight or 10 of them, snip it. Now you can pull the bulk of the feather out. This should keep your tips aligned. So just find the length you want. I think that's gonna work right there. Do a little pinch wrap. Take a second wrap and check our position. Okay, I like that. Let's go one more wrap back so it's not flared up too much. There we go, that's gonna work. Now just bury that in, and we're gonna tie in our hackle next. And this is a, a grizzly, dry fly hackle, and I'm undersizing it a little bit. The last one I tied, I put the feather on my hackle gauge, and I measured one for a size 10, and I think it was just a little bit too big. So we'll see if, if this one is any different. This is probably a feather for a size 12. And I'm gonna leave that stem in, just try to catch it in parallel to the hook right here. And that will help me keep my under, my body smooth when I wrap this floss next. Okay, that body is smooth enough. So take about eight inches or so of a burnt orange floss, and I'm gonna catch it in up front. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this in just a second. So pull that shorter so I don't have to snip it really. Okay, that's fine right there. And I'm catching it in up front so that I can make two layers. I make a pass down and then back up. And it's not really to add any bulk to it, it's just to get uh, a rich color. Because this floss will be a little bit translucent when it gets wet and I don't really want that black showing through. So just make a nice smooth uh, layer going down and then back up. Okay, let's catch it off up here after you get back to the front. And if you have a rotary vise, that would have been a pretty good time to use it. Um, I didn't because I've got a backdrop and a camera right in front of me. It does get a little bit in the way, but it would have maybe saved you a minute if you were to use the rotary. So now let's just wrap this hackle right here. And up to you how close you want these uh, wraps. If you want to make it a a real high floater, put them pretty close together. And I'm just gonna pick some kind of happy medium here. So I do want it to be a pretty good floater, but I also wouldn't mind if it sits down just a little bit in the surface film and you can see some of that orange. 
Now the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of wax on here, or actually a good bit of wax because I'm tying some deer hair for the wing, and take a pretty good clump of it, put it in your stacker. Let's see how well this stacked. Yeah, that's that's pretty pretty even right there. So let's pull this out. And we want it kind of long, you know, at least a body length, maybe not well into the tail, but yeah, let's go with that right there. And I'm going to almost treat this like I do a bucktail. So I'm gonna grab this at the right length and I'm gonna put a wrap just around this deer hair and then you know it's not real tight just yet now my second wrap I can make it a little bit tighter right there and if I'm lucky that will keep it from that wing from really spinning around it is a little bit and I'm not worried so much if it does up front and I don't mind it flaring up front because we're going to be trimming that in just a second so get a couple of tight wraps maybe a, a medium one going back so that back isn't flaring up quite as much as the front. And I think we're fine right there. And well, that one starts spinning around on me, so I obviously need to put another tight wrap on it. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. What you can do, you can lift this up right here and then put a wrap or two through this, kind of like you're working an elk hair caddis head. Okay, so I've got a couple wraps right there. I'm gonna lift all of this up and then put a few wraps right there. And what you can also do, that's where we're gonna whip finish it. So you can either do that now or after you've trimmed the head. So let's go ahead and do it now because it might just make it a little bit easier to, uh, to pull this back up to get our whip finish. So let's just, okay, maybe three or four turns right there. And now, Obviously, we still have a lot of trimming to do, but we're good with our wet finish. So let's go ahead and just saw that thread off right there. And what you'll want to do here, just try to keep this wing separate from all these, the front, the butt ends of this deer hair right here. So I think I've got them all. I see one sticking back right there. We're gonna to have to probably just contend with that separately. So pull this, all this up, give it a little twist if you want, and we're gonna give it a little flat top haircut right there. And now, okay, I see a couple of fibers, that hair right there, that one is, was from the, the front. If you have any more of those, just, just find them and snip them out. I see a couple, here's one right here. And you might want to just give your head a little haircut right here. What you want to avoid is making it really hard to get your tippet up through there. So just to spend a little time here cleaning this up. And really, that's about it, you know. Where you'll put your head submit, just flip it upside down and put a drop right there on those thread wraps and let it wick down in there, and you've got a fishable fly. So it's a pretty neat pattern. I'm kind of digging it. I like this color scheme, and I think this is going to be pretty effective here on the East Coast. So that's it, my friends. I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care, and we'll see you next time.